E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui no DCS World F16 Viper. Essa sequência de vídeos que eu estou postando são dos arquivos lá do canal do Matt Agner, aquele CEO que posta os vídeos acadêmicos do F16 Viper. Até o outono de, desse ano de 2019, ele vai lançar vídeos explicando algumas coisas sobre o F16. Como os vídeos deles são públicos, eu vou reeditar eles e colocar aqui no nosso canal com legendas do YouTube. É, vou colocar a legenda do YouTube lá, vou copiar o vídeo e vou postar aqui no canal. Como os vídeos dele, eu já falei, são públicos, não vai ter problema. E como o meu canal não tem monitoração, ou seja, eu não ganho dinheiro para postar vídeo no YouTube, eu acredito que não vai ter problema. <cười> Mesmo assim, lá no na descrição do vídeo eu vou colocar todos os links dos arquivos original do Matt Egner. F16 Viper, acompanha aí. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this video we're going to take a look at the visual flight rules overhead brake pattern of the F16 Viper. Now we realize this uh, video may seem a bit out of order, but we want to make these videos available as soon as possible rather than a big rush at the end as the different systems come online prior to the release in early autumn 2019. So for those of you that finally got the hang of landing the Hornet, uh, well the Viper is going to be a very very different animal for you, uh, but it's a very challenging and interesting task that I think you're going to have a lot of fun mastering. Now I certainly don't pretend to be an expert on this, but the fundamentals of this video should get you down in one piece. Let's get started. Alrighty then, so before we jump into the simulation, let's take a look at a, a little diagram here to kind of go over the basics of what we're going to be doing uh, in DCS. So the approach is going to be between 300 and 350 knots uh, over the runway at a generally about 1500 feet uh, above the runway. Now this can vary in the real world depending on the airfield, but for uh, this game and the future videos, we're going to do a 1500 foot overhead brake pattern. So as we approach the center of the runway, we'll initiate a level turn overhead brake, which will be 180 degrees level on the horizon, generally between two and a half to three G. And rolling out 180 degrees will place us on the downwind leg. And at that point, we will drop the gear and also put the air brake out. Then once the landing point is about 45 degrees uh, behind us off the shoulder, We'll go ahead and initiate the uh, base leg turn, which will be about 8 to 10 deg degrees nose down. And we'll be seeking about 11 degrees angle attack for the base leg turn into the runway. And then we'll be lining up the 2.5 degree marker on the HUD on the overrun. And then as we close in, we will flare the aircraft uh, to land on the main wheels and then do an aero brake to a stop. Anyhow, that's what we're going to be doing here in the video. And let's see how we actually do it. So at this point, we're on approach to Creech, and on the HUD, we have our airspeed on the left side, our altitude tape on the right side, uh, the heading tape in the middle, and uh, right in the middle of the pitch ladder, we have the velocity vector. And again, we're going to be shooting for about you know, 325 knots, so again, between 350 and 300 knots. And given the airfield elevation, we're going to be looking for a barometric altitude of about uh, 4,600. And also below that, next to the R, you can see the radar altitude, which is about 1,500 feet, which is what we're shooting for. And once I see the tadpole on the HUD flip, I'll go ahead and I'll initiate the brake, which is right about now. So now I'll go ahead and I'll roll to the right. And on average, I want to be somewhere between 2.5 to 3G, and I oscillate a bit. Um, but basically what I want to do is I want to roll out on the downwind leg such that the wingtip is um, a bit below the runway line. And in this case, I'm holding a uh, essentially a constant throttle and I'm keeping a close eye on the barometric altimeter to try to keep it around 4,600. Uh, 4, so I roll out, I will drop the gear and put the brake out. And now that you have the gear down, we have the angle of attack bracket on the HUD. And that's going to be uh, critical uh, during the uh, base leg. So I'm looking over, we got the wing tip uh, just below the runway line, it's about where I want to be. Uh, air speeds around 200 knots. I want to be between 200 and 180. I definitely don't want to be below 180 knots. 
And I'm waiting uh, for the wingtip to be right about at the landing point I want, which is right about there. So now go ahead and initiate, and I'm going to place the velocity vector between uh, negative 5 and 10 degrees down. And then I'm pulling back now and placing the uh, flight path marker just uh, above the bracket, which indicates 11 degrees. And I'm going to be holding that and also then using the throttle to control my airspeed. At this point, I'm wrapping around to 180 degrees and keeping a close eye on the airspeed and uh, my angle of attack. And reducing a bit of the throttle too. And you'll notice below the horizon line, there's a double set of dashed lines. That indicates 2.5 degrees, which is our glide slope. So I'm going to fly to place that on the overrun. And I'm maintaining 11 degrees angle of attack. And then as I get uh, over the overrun, I'll go ahead and idle the throttle and then pull up the stick a bit to place the uh, flight path marker just below the horizon line for a nice gentle touchdown. The main wheel's down. I'll go ahead and I'll pitch up for about 13 degrees angle attack for aero braking. And just using a little bit of rudder to keep myself lined up on the runway. And around 90 knots or so, I'll let the uh, nose come down. And then I'll do the override on the air brake to extend it fully. Uh, stick full back and start uh, putting the uh, brake on a bit. So folks, that's a little overview of landing the Viper in an overhead brake pattern. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks.